Welcome to the Men of Wonder podcast. My name is Corey, your host. This is the first one in a lot of months. I've not been able to do the, the podcast because I've been pulled away to do uh, some business stuff. And um, I'm making this episode because um, my Instagram DMs have been going crazy and a lot of questions coming from the podcast. And I, it's now become very difficult for me to ignore actually making episodes. But um, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful to be back. There's a lot of lessons I've learned in the last few months that I'll be willing to share, especially uh, with lockdown. And I think the major one has been a, a big shift is just uh, the people that we've lost over the couple of years. I mean, the, the, we've lost uh, relationships, lost people uh, death, through um, death and stuff like that. And I don't know what it's like for, for you, but it just sort of put perspective to my life and really um, made me think about what's the most important thing in my life and what do I want to achieve. And also, I started getting thoughts of legacy. What's the thing that I want to leave as a mark on this world and, um, and the impact it can make on somebody's life? Uh, it's... And it almost sounds too grand to think about because everybody doesn't want to think that they can actually make an impact in the world. I mean, they think it's for somebody else, whether it's um, in politics or, you know, Mother Teresa or whatever. They always think of it in that perspective where, you, you know, when you say you want to impact the world, what you don't realize, or what we don't usually realize is that when you say impact in the world, you're talking about um, how can you change one person's life and make a difference and you know um and for anybody that knows me there's that i usually i'm always around people and always uh looking on ways i can get somebody to look inside themselves and see the best version of themselves and it's a mission that i i've been constantly on and even more so now uh, since the coronavirus is something that is <laughs> excuse me for the background noise i'm trying to make some coffee i'm taking uh, this time to uh, actually make this episode because I, I thought usually it's the reason why i didn't make the episodes as well is that you're always trying to make everything perfect and because I was trying to make everything perfect, I was always never getting enough time to do it. So I'm, now I'm just going to just do it so I can continue doing this and keep helping people. Um, but I'm going to just try and go straight into some of the questions. Um, I think the, the main one that has been coming up was just um, just why, um, <laughs> why, why partners seem so mean or why they... Is that sort of uh, friction within a relationship, and sometimes it comes across as very mean, and like uh, the, and I I I totally understand where the people are coming from. Um, there's a story of a friend. Uh, he's um, so he he had been in a relationship where his spouse was treating him very bad, um, and she was very. Um, she would belittle him so and not just uh, at home but in public or around our friends and it was very awkward so it was just the way she spoke to him and a lot of it was um everybody would be very shocked that you know yeah, a guy could just take it and stuff and to a certain extent uh guys the way we are conditioned now in terms of society, we're not conditioned to it to in the sense that we have to take um, some of this stuff. Because if uh, I always give the example, if my partner and I were in a in a public place, and then she subtly told me or something, um, whispering or whatever, she told me something that was very is emasculating, very uh, abusive. But then I reacted in a very loud way. Uh, they would never consider her being the uh, perpetrator. They would always per look at her as a victim. Because we've been conditioned to look that way. I mean, there's uh, movements like the Me Too movement, which I totally support. But there's one of some of the collateral, collateral damage from that is the fact that now uh, every, there's a lens of 
if any man raises his voice to a woman, then he's instantly an abuser. Whereas um, we all resolve conflict very differently, you know. But um, it's it's now become very very uh, common that uh, men take um, we 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 allow our our standards or whatever uh, in terms of conflict resolution. We we usually take a back seat because um, we don't want to be labelled as an abuser or you know whatever. And again, this this is not to say that um, go out and abuse your partners. What I'm just trying to say is that uh, there there has to be a way you can uh, resolve conflicts and in a way that uh, both of you come away with something that you've learned. Because usually conflict is isn't isn't for the sake of making somebody feel bad. It's just that somebody's crying out to say, um, I'm not feeling heard or uh, I'm uh, or I'm upset or I'm taking this out on you because you're the closest person. Uh, you're just the closest person in proximity to uh, for me to vent. So, and it's easy to vent on somebody you love rather than, you know, a stranger because you never know, they might just <laughs> slash you up or something. <laughs> so um, it's always easier to hurt the people that you love because um, one thing I, I did realize quite recently, and I was talking to somebody about this, that um, usually it's easier to vent on somebody you you love because sometimes you've got better control of, you feel like you've got control when you, you, you do it. Whereas if you went you know, and you try and vent on to somebody else that is a complete stranger, you know, it, it's, it just seems wrong. It just seems um, bad. So it's quite weird in that sense that, uh, you know, you think it would be easy just to go and vent to somebody who is a complete stranger. But um, usually we end up venting on the people that we love. And usually that's what creates the scars. And then over a long period of time, we either continue agitating that uh, issue or wound and continue agitating over a long period of time, then you get this situation where or both of you in the, within the relationship, you're now um, always poking on that wound kind of thing. And it's not, it's, that thing never heals. So um, I'd, it's, it's a long-winded way of just saying, you know, uh, most relationships struggle when it comes to communication and i think from previous episodes i did talk about this actually before that you know communication isn't the verbal interaction the communication is also um so for instance if uh, my kids said something to me and i completely ignored her i am i might not have said words but I'm communicating to her that um, she's not worth my time. I'm not speaking to her because she's not worth my time. And again, that has got a impact on what happens going on, going moving forward. And this can be the same within a relationship. So, you know, um, a few weeks ago, my wife pulled me up and said, you know, the other day you just sat there with uh, with the face in the screen of her phone. You know, I wanted to talk to you, but you didn't you know, react or anything. And uh, I just realized that that was a mistake on my part. You know, I spent all day outside working and then uh, I've come to relax. And to be fair, I was trying to relax and just, you know, have my own space, just watching a, a program, which I don't like uh, on TV. So I just thought I would just engross myself in something else. But um, I guess she wanted to have some conversation and I just became very ignorant to what was the situation. So again, it's the fact that she mentioned that it gives us a, a stepping stone to actually rectify that. But most people will just keep it silent and then it just uh, continues building. And then all of a sudden, uh, when it pops, it comes across as though my spouse is very mean or whatever. So a lot of it is conflict resolution. A lot of it is consistent communication. And then the other bit is also just the fact that... Um, Outside of what what you guys do as a relationship, uh, I think with with lockdown and everything, you're all forced to be at home consistently. So um, there's a lot of people that have always always had activities outside of work and home life. So uh, I had a friend 
who recently told me that um, his uh, spouse, she used to go to the gym quite frequently. And because she's not going to the gym, she's quite grouchy. So, you know, that that is, I can relate to that, that, you, you know, if you, you already have things that are, um, because people go to the gym for different reasons, but some people actually go there just for um, distress. It's a moment of zen. So it just, you know, puts them in that point of uh, equilibrium, to lack of a better term. So, yeah, that being taken away, um, even though she can go running, you know, some, like I, I'm one of those people, I prefer to go to the gym and then hit sets on, on equipment rather than actually go out and run. I, I hate the the whole point of running it's like absolutely pisses me off but um yeah so she 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 stopped going to the gym and she doesn't want to go running she's putting a bit on weight and because she's feeling a little bit self-conscious and stuff she gets she starts venting so she vents so um again that's another situation that sort of creates those kind of things so um from the the Bigger picture of all of this is that um, usually it, you we lose track of you know why we're in that relationship and we lose track of what's the actually desired outcome. Uh, recently, I was speaking to somebody and we were talking about um, that people do not define what is a successful relationship is, and sometimes because you've not defined what success is. Uh, the not knowing that you are on track uh, can cause instability within a relationship. And I thought that was quite fascinating because um, if you have a, an agreed um, place that you say, yes, this is what we call success, if you're not quite there, at least it's something that you're both working towards. And it, again, it shifts to priorities within the relationship because if your priorities are all over the place and for on both parties, then this is what creates most of the conflict comes from that. So uh, again, it's something that, uh, it's, it's, it's something that is it's very important to look into, especially in, in relationship terms, that, you know, uh, defining what success is. Now, what that looks like is very different for everyone, based on personality, family values, and where you've come from, and what you desire from marriage. But um, success could be uh, stuff that... So I'll, I'll put it in, in, in terms that, you know, Personally, for me, success would be um, someone in both within that relationship. We both prioritize the fact that we are um, sexual beings. I think that's a, a, a massive one. And this is one that um, women would disagree because they will say, oh, you're being just a pervert. But again, you know, sex is within that relationship. It, it being a priority is important. Now, when I say sex, it doesn't mean the actual penetration and actually doing of sex. It's more to do with the fact that, you know, um, you have to have a dialogue on that sexual front so that you both have that affirmation that, you know, you find the other person attractive. Because, again, that's one of the causes of uh, her feeling um, or her being mean, she's not feeling attractive, you're not having that dialogue where she feels attractive, and then she feels like, you know. So again, it always comes back to this. Within an, any relationship, uh, sex is huge. Uh, whether you're talking about it or not talking about it, or whether you're having it or you're not having it, it's something that is always an issue. So... Yes, that is one of the defining parts of the success of your relationship. What is your dialogue within that sex realm? Uh, the other one is, you know, the career side of things. Uh, what are the ambitions and are the ambitions matching? So usually we all, um, from a very early age, we've got ambitions. You know, when you're 18 years old, you think by the time you get to 25 years old, you'll be a millionaire, you'll be driving a Lamborghini and everything like that because that's just ambition. And that's human, um, as humans, that's why we're, how we're built. We're built to discover new things and be uh, explorers. So we explore in our mind and then we 
set this vision and then we try and go for it. And generally, uh, life beats you up by the time you get to sort of 25, you, you've been beaten up enough because you've been uh, trying to take on responsibility and then fail. And then we anchor every decision that we do based on the failures that we've <laughs> had. So because we failed a lot of times, we start to stop believing in ourselves. And then because we've stopped believing ourselves, then we never go for the things that are potentially going to change our lives. That, again, yeah, is what uh, causes issues in the marriage. So uh, maintaining amb- ambition between the two of you is very important. Uh, I, I've got ambitions to go and... Uh, create a business that's going to support my family and you know my community and everything like that and that means that I'm chasing after millions and stuff like that but the while that's my dream and I'm doing everything I can to achieve it you know it's it's creates momentum within my life which makes me feel like I'm progressing towards something and again the the things I learn along the way spill into my marriage, which makes it better. So ambition is massive. So sex, ambition. And then the other one is relationships outside of uh, the marriage and outside of work. So if that person has got no other friends and cannot, you you end up becoming the source of everything. So yeah, the, the source of compassion companionship uh, friendship and everything so again that's quite uh vital you know that person has to have friendships or at least formed friendships outside of your your marriage you know and that's quite important or marriage or um relationship again those things are really vital when it comes to uh, being in a relationship then you know she she has to be able to go out and be uh, whoever Hannah or you know whatever her name is you know she has to be that person you know not mom not girlfriend not you know she has because they, they were always wearing these different hats and it's really important for somebody to actually just uh, go and be themselves and you know and interact as just that person you know so again uh, th- we've just unpacked quite a lot I uh, to show that this is the reason why I, I, I used to try and do every uh, podcast every single day, which uh, sort of uh, it distills some of the information and makes it so. This, this one has been a, a really, really heavy one, um, but it's, I'm just glad to be making this one. And uh, because of, I've been having a lot of questions around this thing, I thought I'll start off with this one and I hopefully it answers a lot of the questions. I, I try to answer with uh, within the DMs, but... Uh, with time, it just seemed like it's better off if we just make it a podcast episode so uh, people can just come and um, listen to this episode and hopefully it helps. If you've got any more questions, feel free to uh, catch me on the Instagram uh, or you just go to the Man of Honor Facebook group. I've not shared for a long period of time, so um, I want to start doing some stuff on there. Um, one of the things that I've done recently is actually uh, managed to get a handle of my weight so I've lost quite a lot of weight uh, because then one of the key things was uh, I'm gonna have to share this on the next episode is actually what I've done to you know to lose weight and be consistent within because before I wasn't consistent so that was one of the things that um, has changed and it would be very interesting to actually start um, sort of showing you guys what exactly what I did so thank you very much for listening uh, it's been a really, really long uh, time since I've made this episode and it feels amazing because, uh, you know, this is some of the things that I, I really, really love that, you know, that I can t- come out and speak and actually help people have better relationships and um, enjoy relationships because you've got to enjoy it. You can't, you can't be in a relationship where you're upset and, you know, you resent each other and you actually resent life because of the relationship. you got to enjoy. This is, you've got one life to live and it's very, very uh, fragile as we now know. Uh, I think we've always known, but uh, it's been more apparent right now. Like, for instance, the weight loss was inspired by a friend who passed away because of COVID. And um, yeah, I just thought, you know what, this is real, you know. So it's really important for us to actually... Uh, 
be in this life, but also enjoy it as much as we can. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you it's your first time listening to this and you're interested in learning more, I know I've not uploaded anything on the Facebook group, but jo- go and join the Men of Honor Facebook group. Uh, let us know if you've come from this podcast to say, you know what, my name is so-and-so. I had the podcast and I've just joined the Men of Honor Facebook group. So thank you very much. I'll be catching you guys soon. Take care.